So, turns out, this is old news, yeah? Louis C.K. Yeah. loves, just loves to take his wiener out in front of women and just... Yeah. Yep, I feel like I told you about this before it came out. You did because we have because a friend. I, I do. Yeah, <laughs> my my actually my first DM for Dungeons and Dragons uh, comedian, his name is Mikey. Um, he knew about this in the com comedy community. I guess that was a thing that it's people a knew. known thing. He told me like last year. He's like, yeah, it'll probably come out at some point. It's just like f well, I was. So yeah. So if you're someone out there who mm. knows about someone who's taking their dick out consistently and just. Just in on things. I guess I don't know what you should do with that information. Yeah, I, tell your friends, I guess, so that we can have a cold open. Go ahead and at me on Twitter, though, <laughs> so I can know about it. I want to know. <laughs> I want to be able to head to the news. Yeah. yeah. Hello everybody, I'm Hugo. That sounded different, I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. Welcome back to the Atheist Bible Study. Today oh. we're going to be continuing... Oh, wait, maybe we should do some housekeeping. Oh! The channel changed. Down here, that, that, that says Hugo and Jake. No worries. Obviously still, Bible study is still happening. Uh, Wednesdays and Fridays are still going to be your standard TBR stuff. But it allows us to do a little bit more with the channel. Um, so we're, we plan on doing a podcast style thing, um, where we have guests on and we talk to them, um, possibly live at times, possibly pre-recorded, it depends on probably the guest and what they want to do yeah. and how our schedule is and the time of those things, um, and it also keeps us from being cornered inside of YouTube's algorithm <laughs> under Atheist Bible Study slash The Bible Reloaded, just Hugo and Jake, so all the tags for all the Atheist stuff is gone, but the content is still here, so ha <laughs> ha Basically, uh, it just allows us to do a variety of different things. So, The Bible yeah. Reloaded is still a show on this channel. It's Correct. just that on this channel, there will also be extra other stuff that we're going to do. For instance, um, Unpopular Culture is still a channel, and it is we're doing a lot of content over there, honestly. So, the nerdy stuff that we do on Unpop, that's staying over there. And the more, like, in between TBR and Unpop, there is a space that we've been wanting to do things in. That's this channel now. Yeah. So, and also, uh, Quran Reload is way over there in its other channel, uh, which is doing just fine. We're going to upload again. I mean, if you're watching this on Wednesday, you see tomorrow is a new episode. So, I mean, it's still over there. It's just... <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, also, uh, patreon.com slash TBR. We're continuing today in Ezekiel. If you remember what happened at the end of Lamentations, essentially, the people said to God, listen... What happened? Jerusalem fell. Everything's shitty now. Please send someone to help us. Mm. This is where Ezekiel's going to be coming in. He's going to be coming in and God's going to be saying, All right, I guess they've been punished enough, even though I said I was going to wipe them off the face of the earth, and I haven't. Here you go, Ezekiel. Let's help him out. So, this is going to be the introduction of Ezekiel, his visions, uh, a weird four-headed angel thing, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So That hit me. Yeah. Rape. Ezekiel 1. Is that what rape is? No. Chapter 1. Ezekiel's Inaugural Vision. In my thirteenth year, in the fourth month of the fifth day, I was among the exiles by the Kabar River. The heavens were opened, and I saw a vision of I God. I gotta stop you. I know that we're gonna get into the me. Is he actually thirteen years old, or in his thirteenth year of something? In his thirtieth year, not thirteenth. Did you say thirteenth, or did I read thirteenth while you said out loud thirtieth? I don't know. Okay. In my thirteenth year... So, at least thirty years old. He's thirty, but he's a biblical thirty, so he's like oh. ninety-five, basically. Okay. All right. On the fifth of the month, it was the fifth year of the exile of King Jehoiachin. The word of the Lord came to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, by the Kabar River, in the land of the Babylonians. 
I remember uh, a lot of the Israelites, after the uh, destruction of Jerusalem, they went into Babylon and sort of became exiles there, or were taken there against their will by the Babylonians, because as we explained in the previous episode, if you're an artisan, if you're a skilled person, you are of value to these people, because the more people on your side who have skills... Right. You've played Civilization, you yeah. get it. And that answers your question that you are obviously having of, why would someone want a bunch of Jews? Because slavery is bad, Hugo, not... Come on. I looked and I saw a windstorm coming out of the north, an immense cloud with flashing lightning and surrounded by a brilliant light. The center of the fire looked like glowing metal. Wait, there's fire? Fire, to fire tornado is back. Oh, okay, so all the way back from, like, season one, which we don't have seasons, but that's probably our season one. You remember what? We did have seasons. We did have seasons. Because we had to take breaks because this wasn't a full-time thing. Yeah. So, so when season we... one. This is actually season two, by the way. <laughs> so we had season one, a break, and now it's been just a perpetual four-year-long season two. You're welcome. So in season one... Uh, there were fire tornadoes, if you don't remember. Uh, it was Moses, he was running away from the Egyptians, and God's like, Bagoosh! That's the sound fire tornadoes make. Bagoosh! And then fire tornadoes came down and uh, killed some Egyptian peeps, and then he spread the waters. And, uh... This is a nice little callback. I'd also like to point out, <laughs> lit as a literary technique, I sure. do think it's... It, this is just me, mm. jackass, not... You know, any scholarly... I haven't gotten this from somewhere. I'm pulling this... I've taken a class or two, so... Firmly out of my asshole. Um, it seems to me, especially as we move on with this chapter, we're gonna see a lot of callbacks to, okay, now we're gonna go back to the old way of doing things. Now we're gonna go back to obeying God. And the oh, fact yeah. that the way Ezekiel is, for the first time he sees God, which you will in a moment, um, is off the back of this, oh, look at this fire tornado. Yeah. The imagery is ripped directly out of Exodus. I think it's an intentional mirroring of the imagery we're seeing there to show the people, this is the God that took you out of Egypt. It's been a long time since then. He has now come back to redeem you once again. Yeah, and if you've been with us a while, since season one, um, we talked a lot about motif usage in the Old Testament, and so we've kind of gotten away from that as the more... Um, God, calling it historical is really hard for me to do. Um... But the religious-sized historical text... It's historical accounts through the lens of the religious text of the... It's, it's hard to corroborate a lot of the yes. historical... So, but um, it's, it's probably very slanted history. It's like the Fox News of historicals, historical text, right? So um, it, now we're getting back into sort of this more prose, and um, I think you see that very much in the next few interesting stories like Jonah and stuff like that, but definitely in the New Testament. It gets back to this more... Um, literary sort of form instead of this documentation where yeah. that begat that and here are the stats for this and so expect more and in the fire was what looked like four living creatures in appearance their form was human but each of them had four faces and four wings their legs were straight their feet were like those of a calf and gleamed like burnished bronze under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. All four of them had faces and wings, and the wings of one touched the wings of another. Each one went straight ahead. They did not turn as they moved. This might be hard for you to picture. Uh, yeah. There are pictures. I looked as I was reading this earlier on mm. my own. Um, there are pictures of this online. We'll put one up, I'm sure. This is kind of what you're dealing with. It's sort of a being with, like, four heads and, like, four wings and it's but it seems like they kaleidoscope together in real time yeah it's very bizarre so so kind of like almost like a tesseracty sort of uh 4d eldritch being. abomination is what i was wow gonna say. you know what i guarantee i don't watch ancient aliens i guarantee this was featured <laughs> probably I, it's got to be. Come on. Oh, it came down in a ball of fire. There's obviously aliens, UFOs, and then 4D beings. You just can't you can't wrap your mind around it, man. I, I've also seen the History Channel. I literally have not watched any of that. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. My girlfriend watches it a lot. She mm. knows it's not real, but for some reason she finds entertainment out of it, which drives me crazy. That explains I her InfoWars research. Because <laughs> I can't understand. It's like, well, you know, it's fake. I... I I get the entertainment value of watching crazy people talk. Like, I, I liked, like, listening to, I don't know, like, Manson family information. Anything about serial killers where they're just psychopaths. It's all macabre, but it's really fascinating to me. Like, just the, the mutterings of insane people. So, 
Like, when these are, like, not quite all the way tipped over the line, but they're like, they could be next door, but also they prep for the apocalypse. That's interesting to me, so I get it. Okay. Right? It's, like, fascinating. Fascinating slash unnerving and makes me not <laughs> sleep at night knowing these people live around me every day. <laughs> I gotta say, I think we outnumber them, considering Alex Jones has not yet been elected to office. Don't worry, though, the pedophiles are, the, are his in... That's his in. Yeah. The you Repu know who's better than a pedophile? Alex Jones. So. The Republican Party has got their resources down to, at this point, with Roy Moore, pedophile versus lawyer who convicted KKK members, but also happens to be a Democrat. Doug Jones did make fun of him today on Twitter. It was hilarious. If Roy Moore wins, this I I have no faith in this country left. Can we, can we give it's Alabama to the Mexicans? They would like that, right? We should have let the South secede. We would have been better off. Their faces looked like this. Each of their four had the face of a human being. On the right side of each had the face of a lion. Whoa. And on the left face of an ox. Oh. Each also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. They each had two wings spreading out upward, each wing touching that of the creature on either side. And each had two other wings covering its body. Each one went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go, without turning as they went. The appearance of the living creatures was like that of burning coals of fire or like torches. Fire moved back and forth among the creatures. It was bright, and lightning flashed out of it. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of light, and I looked at the creatures. This guy likes the word creatures. Yeah, he does. Jesus. I saw a wheel on the ground beside each of the creatures with four faces. This was the appearance and structure of the wheels. <laughs> I really like that he has to qualify, like, what he's about to describe, even though he, he set it up. Like, this is, this is like, English 101 type stuff, where your teacher would be like, you don't need this sentence. But he's like, I think he's trying to explain. It sounds like he had a fever dream and he's freaking out. It sounds out. like he either had a fever dream or some sort of uh, hallucinogenic drug trip ap accidentally, mm. maybe. And, or on purpose. And he's trying to describe the ineffable. Uh, I love that word. Say uh, it one more time. Ineffable. Mm. Uh, and he's doing, I guess, I, I can picture what he's saying, but it's right. not something but that I translates guarantee, to the I guarantee spoken what, word. I, what we're thinking isn't what this person's writing. No. Right? So it's, it is interesting. Again, it's kind of like reading a manifesto of someone who, whose thoughts you cannot comprehend. This was the appearance of the structure of the wheels. They sparkled like topaz, and all four looked alike. Each appeared to be made like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would go in and out of any of the other four directions the creatures faced. The wheels did not change direction as the creatures went. The rims were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a hallucinogenic drug trip this guy went on. Yeah. That's, um, uh... Hallucinogenics were a thing, uh, specifically, like, uh, oracles in, uh, ancient Greece. Um, their temple was, um, inside, um, uh, kind of, the, the foundation of it was built over top of a vent, which released a chemical, and then chemicals was eluding me, but, um, it caused them to hallucinate, and we know this because the thing's still there, and we can test it. Um, and that's where they kept their fucking oracles who talked to the gods. So, I mean, it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility for someone to have had a drug-induced trip, saw this shit, and thought, wow, that's really interesting, I'm religious, uh, this must have religious significance. Um, those of us who have tried hallucinogenics would also consider religious experience a, uh, reasonable, out, uh, thing to think that you had. Yeah. So... People have religious experiences all the time in hallucinations. Yeah. Even non-religious people. Yeah. Not that 50% of us would know what that is. <laughs> Allegedly. When the living creatures moved, the wheels beside them moved. And when the living creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. <laughs> Whenever the spirit would go, they would go. And the wheels would rise along with them. Because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels, when the creatures <laughs> moved... <laughs> I know. This is like... This is like when you tell someone you had a dream, it was you, but it wasn't you. You know what that means, because you knew you felt what it meant, but it definitely, like, you can't just look at something and go, that's where the soul is kept. That's the problem with trying to describe things that are nonsensical, right. like on drug trips that are nonsensical, because the feelings you're feeling aren't based in reality, they're based in 
your feelings sure. system now, is I... all fucked up and you're feeling things based on no actual stimuli. I know that we said this man's tripping balls, but also I will not rule out just crazy dream. Oh, could be just crazy motherfucker or yeah. crazy dream. Just a whatever. dream. Like he could be a normal motherfucker with a crazy dream, but gonna gonna side with probably an off guy with crazy dream and or drug trip. I vote drug trip. Yeah. Also, are the wheels connected? I, I don't know how this... You looked at the pictures and I didn't. Are the wheels connected to the bodies of these things? They're or like are, next to it. It's they're just next thing. to it? It depends on what picture you're looking at. There's Whoa. all kinds of different depictions. Because, again, it's not very... They should um, come with illustrations. Also, the fact that they said, like, the spirits of the creatures were in the wheels. Like, that's a very... Yeah. Like, I under... Like... Like, are they wooden wheels, or are they wheels with eyes? I can't explain to you why that sentence makes sense to me. They're spirits. We're in the wheels, and how would he know that? How is yeah. that? But it like, makes sense. I understand the frame of mind he's coming from where right. that makes sense. I think the 50% thing is sort of like you're, you're taking the veil off of that one, buddy. <laughs> Spread out among the heads of the living creatures was what looked like something like a vault, sparkling like crystal and awesome. Under the vault, their wings were stretched out, one towards the other, each hand two wings covering its body. When the creatures moved, I heard the sound of their wings, like the roar of rushing waters, like the voice of the Almighty, like the tumult of an army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. Then there came a voice from above, a vault over their heads as they stood with lowered wings. Above the vault, over their heads, was what looked like a throne of La Paz Lazuli, and high above the throne was a figure like that of a man. I saw that from what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like glowing metal, as if full of fire, and that from there down he looked like fire, brilliant light around him, like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell fa face down, and I heard the voice of what of one speaking. That um, leads me to believe he was conscious. Uh, potentially, but interestingly, again, many times in the Bible it says, at least specifically once that I can think of, it says you can't look upon God yeah. and live. Here he's saying he looked upon God and not only looks at God, in detail describes what God looks like. A, a man who looks like he's like metal and shivering with like fire. That's how yeah. he describes but what God looks like. But also like lion, eagle... No, that was Place. the underlings. Those were angels. Oh. Above them was God. Oh, that was the vault voice. Yes. Ah. And next... Glowing uh, metal. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yep. And uh, the next chapter... They I was get getting disoriented. Guns. I'm not going to lie it's, to you. It's hard to get. What essentially just happened was uh, four beings came down, each with four faces. A face on each. So a face here, so a face like here, a, a face here, a face here. Yeah. Human, different animals. Four wings... There's four of them, and then above them is God. Also, I assume they have the bodies of four yes, people? they have the bot. No, they have the body of one person. Because the wings come out from the body, but they touch the other wing because yeah. there's four wings. Again, there'll be pictures. <laughs> and uh, above them is God. And that's all just the setup for what God's about to say to him. I'm telling you, man. Drug trip. So chapter two, Ezekiel's call to be a prophet. So let's see what weird fire metal god has to would say. Would you listen to weird fire metal god if he showed up in front of you? I think I'd hear him out at least. I think you have to. Right, yeah. I don't think it's an you option. Know, you don't know the threat assessment on there. Yeah. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the spirit came into me and raised me to my feet and I heard him speaking to me. That's well, all, also, by the way, the spirit, the Holy Spirit mm. is often characterized like this. It's the force... That, like, when you don't feel like you can do a thing, and you do the thing, it's supposed to be the Holy Spirit that made you do that. Mm. Like, when I don't want to get up to get the remote, but I get it? <laughs> yeah. Ah! Generally, it'd be, like, Holy Ghost and something for God. But... Also, uh, side note, uh, the phrase, son of man, um, technically means just human being, but they admit in the footnotes of this that they keep the phrase, son of man, instead of writing human being... Due to its possible link to capitalized Son of Man in the New Testament. He said, Son of Man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious people. They will know that a prophet has been among them, and you, son of man, 
Do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though their briars and thorns are all around you, and you live among the scorpions. <laughs> Do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like the rebellious people. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Ooh. And I looked, and I saw a hand stretched out to me. In it was a scroll, which he unrolled before me. On both sides it were written, words of lament, and mourning, and woe. And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this <laughs> scroll. Then go and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Oh, wow. Well, that's, uh, that's some good imagery there. Um... And he does eat the scroll. Yeah. Um, and it, he says it tastes good. I mean, you might as well read that last part. Well, I'll just read it. Fuck okay. it. Son of, he tells him, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving to you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it. And it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. That sounds like maybe long dictum. Just a little bit of long dicking. Maybe. But, of course, the imagery is supposed to be God saying, this is my message, take it to the people, uh, mm. and he eats the message, and the message is sweet like honey. Despite the fact that, Despite the fact that the message itself is probably going to be very, obey God! Like, that's not sweet. That's not... <laughs> that is a drug-addled brain Yeah. Uh, that is also being a religious person. Yeah. Okay. That's a bad combo. That is a bad combo. Yeah. Okay, I'm not saying that you can be a drug-addled, uh, non-religious person no. and be sane all the time. I'm just saying, like, the, uh, the importance of your thoughts, maybe the agency in which you, uh, carry out those thoughts might be a little more severe if you are religious. Yeah? I think we can agree? I agree. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for that. Uh, Ezekiel's a fun ride, man. Yeah, this will be good. And then we'll be on the New Testament. Yeah, very shortly. We got, like, Jonah and some other shit, but barely, yeah. barely anything. This, this, the year of our Lord, 2018, well, that, you know, it's coming up. I'll be New Testament year. Yes, it will. Uh, and anything else you want us to talk about since we are Hugo and Jake now as a channel, and Bible Reloaded is the thing we do on it, mm -hmm. if there's anything you want us to talk about, about anything... Yeah. Let us know. We'll do Literally it. Literally about anything. Um, except stuff we're not interested in. Yeah. Like, oh, SJWs. Meh. Bored. Bored of that. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, now, if you want to bring up a political uh, thing, like today, for instance, uh, the uh, Supreme Court is debating the uh, gay cake oh. debacle thing to see if a person can deny service to another person based on uh, their, I guess, a demographical quality which i would disagree with but i will also say that if you just want to not make a cake i think that's fine too i like i'm, I'm on i'm on both sides of this one which is actually interesting because i'm very pro lgbt whatever else in the letters my opinion is all or nothing on that either if we're gonna have protected classes basically every class has to be under that class yeah or not have it at all sure if you can say no to a gay people to gay people making their cake yeah it has to be the same for like Christians. Black people, Christians, white right. people. Which I don't think we should, because it, uh... Now, I... The thing is, as a as a business owner, I think you ought to be able to deny service to any person for any reason, except you just... You can't say the reason, because I feel like... I feel like that's a slippery slope towards black people being forced out of communities, and gays being forced out of communities and I'm, stuff. I'm I, in favor of having protected classes. I'd rather... I do, too. Gays I think, be part of it. I think because you, you can't... This is my whole thesis against basically conservatism in general and, and just outright liberty is because you cannot count on the virtue of people to be good. No. And, and because of that, we can't have unlimited freedom. If we could, if we were all really good people, I would absolutely be a libertarian because it makes the most sense if you're all good people. But you're not. We're not. I'm not. I'm sure you're not. So, like, there's, it's, it's just a thing where we have to... We have to Try to make the most liberty within the most safe place. Safe space. Okay. Um, so I guess that's it. Yeah. 
Uh, you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. You can also subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click a button that's also another subscribe button, which is the bell, to make sure you get the thing. I didn't make that happen. That was that was a YouTube thing. I'm sorry. But also, donate to our Patreon campaign. Uh, we do a once-a-month patron-only hangout, which is a lot of fun. And also, um, the uh, oh, let me have that real quick. Whoop! Doing the special features, this bad boy right here, Bells of Innocence. And if you didn't see our movie review of that, what the fuck? Um, but it was a lot of fun, and patrons will get the special features review of that. Yeah. Uh, where we'll just sit here, like, in real time and watch it together. It'll be fun. So, uh, I guess that's it. Until next time. I'm Hugo. Jake. Bible Reloaded. On the channel, Hugo and Jake. Hmm. Weird. <laughs>